In the previous video, I talked about the successful or pyramid approach to organizing and understanding concepts and how that differs from the dumpster or unsuccessful approach in which one just memorizes a lot of formulas without any structure. This difference in approaches carries over to your actual problem solving as well. Here are some typical self-statements that will indicate whether you're using the dumpster approach in your problem solving courses. I don't even know how to start those word problems. I can't handle problems that have tricks or curves in them. I don't bother with drawing diagrams and setting up tables. Just give me the formula that works. I call this the uh-oh state because students using the dumpster approach often find themselves saying, uh-oh, I don't know what to do here. And it's a state I experienced too often as an engineering student. By contrast, if you use the pyramid approach, you will find yourself in the aha state, as in, aha, I get it. I know how to do this. It's a wonderful state to be in. But how do you make that happen consciously and regularly? First, you need to carefully analyze the solved examples that you get in text and lecture to extract the steps you need to guide the solving of problems with that concept. And you need to do this analysis before you actually start solving the practice problems. First, what was done in that step? Second, how was it done? What concept or procedure was used to carry out the step? Third, why was it done? Also, try to be fairly specific with your answers to these three questions. For example, you might think step two is just an identify X and Y step, but there's actually much more going on, and the three analysis questions can really help you dig into the depth of this step. What was done in this step? Identify X and Y, yes, but in words and on the diagram. How was it done? On the diagram, you can see Y is related to the speed of the person walking, and X is related to the shadow length of that person. And why was this step done? so that you can mathematically describe the known and unknown rates given in the problem, which is actually the next step. And you may want to jot down abbreviated reminders beside the solved example in your notes. So besides step two, you could write, identify X and Y related to known and unknown rates. Often you don't have to jot down the answers to the how or why questions because they could be obvious or it's something you know quite well. But be really sure you can answer those three questions for each step. Also, some pyramid approach students will actually resolve that solved example using those newfound steps. This may appear to take longer, but it will actually save you time because the key to efficient problem solving is having well understood and solid steps that can guide you through the problem solving process for that concept. The second part of the step strategy is to use those steps on each relevant practice problem you attempt. If and when you have trouble solving one of those problems effectively, you will then need to get help, but also make sure you revise your steps so that they allow you to confidently handle the difficulty posed by this problem. For example, if you have trouble setting up a word problem in math, it may be that you actually had trouble organizing the table of information needed. This means your step, which might have just said make table, needs to be clarified. So your step has what you have to do, and you likely know why you have to do it, but you are not sure of how you do it. How do you make a good table of information? Possibly you had trouble with the columns, so the revised step needs to remind you that the columns must reflect the key equations that underlie the solving of these word problems. Another common revision to your steps is the one needed to counteract the all too common careless error or dumb mistake that is just so easy to make in mathematical problem solving. What I add here is a little watch out substep that catches the little error I make at that spot. For example, I, like many students, would often forget to attach the correct sign, especially the negative sign, when I tabulate some given information in a word problem. So at the end of the step dealing with tables, I add a watch out substep that reminds me to check signs. 
This focus on creating good steps that will work will probably mean you don't solve as many problems as a student using the dumpster approach. Remember that the dumpster approach student is trying to solve as many problems as possible, but just by memorizing lots and lots of formulas in the hope that something will work. But remember, it's not the formulas that work. It's a good set of steps that does. Good luck in your problem solving.